Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Intuitive Mind Solutions podcast. And today we have a special guest with us. We have, I always want to call you Dr. Jim Chester, but Jim Chester is a marketer of chiropractic and I'm here as well co-hosting with Dr. Adrian Lorraine and Joshua Baudewines, as usual. And Hi. so I'm going to keep calling you Dr. Jim, if that's okay with you. I feel like I'm on a, an episode of Hollywood Squares. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Jim is the CEO of Cairo Hustle. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't know what that is, uh, I recommend you checking out his uh, website, CairoHustle.com. And we'll have all that information about his stuff and his programs on the podcast description and on our YouTube channel description. So Jim, I've known you a long time and I really appreciate you coming on the show. You know, I've known you since I was in chiropractic school and we were, you know, my bartending job, your bartending job. We learned a lot about psychology of the human being working together. And now it's great seeing you like 12 years later in this situation and being able to be on this platform interviewing you because all I see on the world is you interviewing others. So I'm going to let you have the, have the floor, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and you can go into your program so we can help support it. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, uh, Joshua, Adrian, and uh, Dr. Matt for having me on today. Um, I hope to reveal some truth about natural healing and chiropractic. Um, that's our forte. Um, I think that's a French word possibly. Um, but uh, forte is a chiropractic uh, community and uh, chiropractic communication, marketing, sales strategies, things um, that help boost uh, the um, brand equity of chiropractic and uh, not only be a free resource to people, as you mentioned with our podcast, uh, Cairo Hustle, but we also, um, you know, we've taught people how to build their practices uh, during grassroots marketing. And I think that that's something really important. And now we've uh, kicked off into the digital world. So we believe in old school marketing and new school marketing. And uh, yeah, we kind of, it's like a, what do they call it? A seven ten split or something when you're bowling and like you have like both ends of the spectrum. That's what we've done with uh, how we've understood the chiropractic marketplace. And that's why I knew by interviewing people, um, we did 365 interviews in 2018. That's why I knew by interviewing people, you'd penetrate the market. And I, I really believe that chiropractic needs more uh, um, brand awareness. And I, I believe that what we did was really uh, super cool um, for the chiropractic profession. And, you know, I, I know that this is being disseminated over in the Netherlands. So um, it is very important for people to understand that chiropractic is a lifestyle and that wellness professionals are about um, the three T's thoughts, traumas, and toxins. And uh, chiropractors are uh, just as educated in school um, through graduate school and becoming doctors as a medical doctor. And I think that those distinctions are necessary for the general public to understand is that chiropractors are very well educated and uh, they're actually more progressive and hands-on care than uh, sickness and pharmacology. So I think that when people start to think about the natural health world, uh, chiropractors are um, um, portal of entry doctors for uh, health and, and wellness. So I think, you know, just kind of talking about what we do, um, we're the number one podcast in the world in chiropractic. Um, we get between 15 and 18,000 listens an episode. And I know that some people are like, ah, poo poo to podcasting, but that's where the market's growing towards. The market's growing towards People wanted to be passive. Um, um, they want to be influenced passively. And uh, listening to something is a passive form of influence. So, uh, yeah, everybody else is coming into the arena of podcasting. We've been doing it for uh, three years now. And uh, I love connecting the dots um, for the chiropractic profession through stories. And I think that something I learned early on in chiropractic was um, tell the story, tell the story, tell the story. So I just built our brand around telling chiropractor stories. You're muted. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's the story can be simple and you just keep repeating and telling people the truth about it. 
And that's what I love how, how you get so many people connected uh, with promoting chiropractic and branding it. It's as if you've created the chiropractic brand for the whole, the whole goddamn world. And that's what I see from where I'm at living in the Netherlands and you being in the States and the amount of content that you're putting out there is so amazing and it's massive for the chiropractic profession. So I do have to thank you for that. Well, Dr. Matt, before that, my innovation was creating a documentary on chiropractic because I didn't think that people had told the story the right way. So when we produced chiropractic, the documentary, that was light years, four years ago, <laughs> um, before we even thought about doing the podcast. And the podcast was an incubation phase for two years before we even released. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to, for people to understand that being creative and building a strategy and a system is much more than having like this impetus of an idea. It takes time to develop like a brand and an idea and a system and a strategy and a repurposing program and staying ahead of technology. You know, something cool, I'm going to just let like the, take the cat out of the bag, but we're going to take what we're doing. You could do this too. It's a program called restream. So when we go live through zoom, it's going to go live through Facebook, through Instagram, through YouTube and through uh, what's the other one? Uh, LinkedIn all at the same time. <clears throat> Oh, nice. So we're staying ahead of the technological curve as well. And I think that that's something to be aware of is when people want to create something, like you have to stay steps ahead of the rest of the pack if you really want to be relevant. And so that's what I love about it is because you're like steps ahead and you, you had the foresight to know that this was going to blow up no matter what and you were ready for it and yeah i love watching the evolution of your your character it yeah it's it's awesome awesome stuff to see and Thank so you. now so now with uh i'm gonna ask my first question about your program um keep it very simple why should chiropractor get your program what are you gonna do for him um, so the program is called new patients in a box. Um, it's a marketing grassroots approach to uh, business building. I've always said, if you're interested in building business and making money, you have to go harvest your community. And I think the greatest way to do that is through, um, building connections with people and going out to your community and becoming a trusted resource for them. And, uh, just because you get a degree doesn't mean people are going to come to you because they think you're smart. Um, they're going to go to you because you figured out marketing and branding. And Grant Cardone said it best. Um, best known beats best every time. So if you become the referable, trusted resource in your community and you go out and meet people where they are, yeah, you build your business. And I teach people strategies on how to do grassroots marketing that builds their business. And that's stuff, that's stuff we weren't taught in school. So that's really important for people to get into that. I, I think for if they want to create that awareness for the community over what people are doing and with, without it, it can be hard. You have to be strategic. And you know, honestly, when I first went out and did my first chiropractic marketing event, I thought it sucked. I'm like, this stuff sucks because I was trained differently. I was trained to do screenings of people and try to convince people that they need a chiropractic. And then after I did 600 events in two and a half years, I realized that it wasn't about trying to convince people. People are all looking for solutions for a better quality of life. And I basically say, hey, who's looking for a good chiropractor? And people come over and they talk to me and then I schedule them. So I switched it from a screening to a scheduling. And I think that when you understand that people just want to have a brief conversation with you and tell you what's going on and look for an offer, Everybody wants an offer. And I guess that's what I'm, what I realized after going out into the marketplace and just beating the streets is that people are just looking for solutions. And if you go out there and meet them and tell them that there's a solution for this, then yeah, you, you're winning. Adrian or Josh, you have any questions? Uh, yeah. I've, um... 
So what is the, um, for people listening, uh, what is the goal of, uh, of uh, marketing? The goal of marketing, um, I think everybody has to understand that if you don't have a marketing budget, you don't understand business. You are basically a trained technician that doesn't know how to build a business. Marketing is the lifeblood of business development and business growth. It's like um, the Harv Aker on uh, the about the uh, millionaire mind mindset or something. Um, I don't remember the exact title, but the, he, he said, "You, uh, you're not a chiropractor. You're um, <laughs> you're a chiropractic marketer. <clears throat> so you're, you're yeah, you, uh, you're the marketer first, and then the the, the actual chiropractor or the the deliver of the, of the service or all that. Um, I, I really believe, Dr. Adrian, that the uh, usage would be a uh, um, communicator, um, advocate. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I think uh, the headspace of when it comes to marketing and the headspace of when it comes to people looking for solutions that when those meet, that's when opportunity happens. That's cool, yeah, very true. Very true. And I have a second question. So um, um, what is your formula for becoming the, the best marketer in the profession? Or what, what, what has been your um, journey into being who you are now? Yeah, I, I appreciate you asking me that too. Um, one of the things is, uh, as you mentioned, I'm not a chiropractor. Um, I got a degree in marketing and journalism back in the uh, 2002. Um, I'm 41. I got into the profession uh, um, 10 years ago, um, became a documentarian. So I started studying the profession. Okay. I think that that's what makes me different than most people that do marketing for chiropractic is I studied like the history of chiropractic. Um, I grew up in the um, birthplace of the profession. So my hometown is Davenport, Iowa. A lot oh, of people okay. don't know that, but chiropractic started in where I was born. So I was uh, exposed to chiropractic at 16 years old. And I realized that there was something really special about it. I always felt better when I got adjusted. No one had to convince me ever. It was just, I knew that when I got adjusted, my um, quality of life was uh, functioning better. And that's really what drew me to the profession. And then um, I got, I was doing journalism um, and I realized that um, nothing that the world was producing was the truth. Mm -hmm. And I stepped away from journalism after two years. And um, yeah, I think seven years later, I met Dr. Matt and I was uh, bartending and uh, I had a lot of fun doing that life because you get a chance to connect with people and network with people. And I realized if I took those same attributes over to the chiropractic space, then I could make an impact with a uh, close knit community that we're all interested in health and wellness. And I could use those same skill sets that I learned through marketing and journalism, um, through bartending and helping chiropractic. So I just used a lot of uh, repurposed uh, ambition mm -hmm. and said, hey, if I, if I stay consistent, and I outpace people with content, people are all going to know what number's on the back of my jersey because they're all going to be following. So I knew that that was massively important with, you know, self-development and branding. Like if I could outpace people and put out more content than them, then we win, period. Mm. Okay. He, did, he did the work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know you until uh, Dr. Matt actually started to share. Um, your content on his Facebook page mm -hmm. and on the Intuitive Mind Solution page, and I uh, I lost it. Yeah, and so so yeah, I really appreciate you uh, you putting the, the work to uh, um, create that content. Yeah, and you know what they say is if if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. <laughs> so so the next. Josh, do you have any specific questions? Because I was going to use you in this next question, unless you had a specific question. I have a question, actually. 
Yeah, let it fire. Uh, yeah, well, um, we're in a, in, a, in a time of, yeah, in a special time with, with this COVID stuff. And there's a lot going on with people and vaccines and blah, 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 all that stuff. Uh, according to you, what is the best way or what has to happen to, uh, or what is the best strategy to open up the people's eyes about holistic healthcare? Um, so there's a certain thing in this world, um, healthcare, and a lot of people are interested in that. But people have to understand that there's uh, pharmacology care, there's sick care, there's crisis care, and there's health care. And uh, I think the most important things for people to be healthy is have control of their mind and to think for themselves. And by doing so, practicing the chiropractic lifestyle, and that's eating nutritious, um, getting enough water into your body, being physically active. Um, I think it's bigger than a pandemic. I think it's self-accountability on a day-to-day -day basis and consistency on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you're not reliant upon a system to um, provide you crisis care or pharmacology care. So I think that when people understand there's different tiers to the health arena, that's when they start to realize that self-responsibility is the most important part. Yeah, but how do, what's the best strategy to open their eyes on, on this one? How do we do this? Do, do we go public with it? Do, do, are we on the right track with intuitive mind solutions? Uh, um, I think another part of this is cross-pollination branding and co-branding with trust. I think that when you have an idea that is uh, valuable, um, it always wins. So continuously putting out good interviews like you guys are doing, I think is important. Um, developing content of value for people to have as a resource, um, I think is super important. Utilities, um, I think, you know, being able to give people actionable ideas, like, yeah, go see if your uh, spine is in alignment. Well, why? Well, because the spine, if you go see a chiropractor, they're gonna evaluate your nervous system which works off of your organ system, which works off of your immune system. So if you can understand health comes from the core of your body, that the healthier your spine, the healthier your lifestyle. And like I was mentioning earlier, it's a chiropractic lifestyle. You got to eat right. You got to move right. You got to get adjusted. You got to sleep well. I mean, all these things are so important to a, a high, high um, outputs input, inputs output. If you put good stuff in, you get good stuff out. If you put shit into yourself, you get shit out. And if you allow yourself to be led by dogmatic approach to what is going on right now in the world, yeah, you're going to believe that everything is in peril and that we all should be afraid of each other and that a face mask is going to protect you from financial uh, you know, downfall. And I think that when you, when you really understand that um, the chiropractic lifestyle is a solution um, for people to uh, not live in fear. So education. Uh, yeah, and so I understand, Josh, with your question and stuff. With within the Netherlands, getting them into the door. This was the question I wanted to uh, go into a little bit because I'm familiar with your with your new patients in a box, and I did when I was in California. I think I did between 35 and 40 screenings a year. Mm -hmm. like th for three years and I was just nonstop screenings and screenings. So if you're listening to this and you have, and you are having a tough time with your screening events or your scheduling events where you go to events in your marketing chiropractic, well, Jim has everything set up for you. So you don't have to make the mistakes uh, in order to learn from them because he's got this all listed out for you to be able to do this. So then, you're going to save a lot of time because you won't be making these mistakes because what will happen is you'll do a screening event. You'll find what you did wrong. You'll improve on it, but it might take 10 to 15 different events before you, you got it down good because that's what the learning process is when it comes to doing this. And Jim already did all the homework. He already has all the, all the systems in order for you. So anybody, this is just a 
just to share a little bit more of what I know about the program. So that way everything will be streamlined for you if you, uh, if you join the new patients in a box. And in the Netherlands, this stuff is, is something complex because we did this at an event, a huge event where we were selling um, a scheduling coupon for like 20 or 25 euros. And then they had to pay up front to schedule that appointment. Zero people wanted it. And from my assistants, the secretaries that I work with, they were saying it's too American and the Dutch culture doesn't, they, they, they think it is a kind of type of scam. Joshua, is this something that is, um, do you have something you can say about that? Because when we tried that type of thing for getting people scheduled, they automatically thought we were trying to like scam them. Yeah. Um, because I know the Dutch like the, the discounts and stuff, but then when yeah. you offered it to them on the spot, they're like, no. Yeah. And, and this is, this is where the hard part comes in. Uh, like in America, chiropraction is all over the place. Uh, holistic healthcare also, it's, it's really popular. And we still are in this culture that is starting to wake up. We're not there. We're starting to wake up. You see one, two, here pops one up, there pops one up. Uh, but it's not the way as it is there. So it's not as popular. People don't know about it. They, the first question when you say, yeah, uh, I got this great chiropractor. He can help you. The first question they ask me is, what's a chiropractor? Is that something like a manual therapeut? You know, and that's the thing. And then you start to explain them what it is. And then you say, yeah, it's that, like this holistic healthcare. And they look at the nervous system and they look at what you eat and how you're doing. And they try to help you in, an, in, in, a, in a total way. And then they start to listen. But to get the word out there, that's why, why I asked the question um, to Jim was what, what was the best strategy to open people's eyes uh, when they're all asleep? You know, and that, uh, that I think is most part of the problem that we, you can't sell it here because it's unknown. And we have this, uh, uh, the, the foundation against Quacksalverai, who is all the time throwing dirt at every holistic health care department there is and it's a, a big a big dump that's financed by big pharma to blacken everybody out who's in uh, something else than pills and drugs and sedation well it opens me up to say this then um we have to go more fundamental because we are not the same market awareness as uh in the Netherlands is not the same market awareness as the States. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll switch my uh, messaging a bit. And I think that chiropractors really need to build relationships with other um, healthcare providers. I think the first step is to build internal referrals and to become familiar within these other um, healthcare arenas. Um, you have to, um, one of the best ways for a chiropractic office to build their office without marketing is getting referrals. So you have to build the relationship, relationship equity, relationship branding within the medical industry, I think would be huge. Um, working with, uh, you, you can make the list yourself. Um, healthcare providers that are, are of interest to you to network with. And then you can start, um, I guarantee to you, if you started, if chiropractors started uh, making a lunch a week with a different um, provider in their community, yeah, their business would grow. And then we would start getting more market awareness. And here's something that will probably blow your guys' damn minds is only 8% of the American population is under chiropractic care. So the market awareness is still suffering here. So I can only imagine in an upstart um, um, arena 
where chiropractic's relatively like new, yeah, it's it's going to be um, years of campaigning and consistency and market awareness that's going to take to fight off the evil empire of big pharma. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a grassroots approach, man. And I wish I could say something that would make it easier for people to understand, but it's uh, staying consistent, building relationships and uh, building from the, the ground floor up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have, we have one uh, thing that's an advantage to us and that is uh, people are getting tired of being treated by the, this medicine and not getting the results. That that's for sure. Yeah. And you know, Joshua, I'll say this to you as well. We've been really patient with it all and mm -hmm. we've built the foundation ready to go. We've got the infrastructure, we got the content available now to put out. And then it's just, following what Jim did and, and we're, we're going to be doing the work and we're going to be putting this in a very concise way and how we're going to reshare this. And so that's where we're going to be at. So thanks Jim for sh sharing because you, you lit some fire under me for, for that because now I know exactly how we're going to set this up. Thanks for elaborating that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's always, there's always, as they say, there's, there's uh, layers to the onion and as you start taking the, the, the peeling the onion back, you get to uh, not not only get a, no, a, a nauseous eye burning sensation, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it, it reveals something new. Yeah. So this is great. So this will really help the Intuitive Mind Solutions and our chiropractic and uh, Joshua's uh, psych psychology coaching business. Community outreach. Yeah. Mm. Go out there and build relationships with other providers. So if you're if you're listening and you need help with your business, get Jim Chester on your podcast. <laughs> I got it written down. So. That's good. So now we're going to go to the next bit in our show and do a little comic relief. Love it. I have this book, the Grota Sprake Warden book. <laughs> so the, gr gonna, the greatest words ever spoken. So, no, it's, this it's, is it's all the Dutch. Dutch expressions like break Same a leg expression. like yeah. you say break a leg what does that mean it means good luck <laughs> really that also doesn't make any sense yeah. so um, we're not the only one huh? keep it in mind <laughs> i heard that was like a broadway thing you tell somebody to, when they're going on stage to break a leg <laughs> yeah it's like contra jinxing or something <laughs> So, Jim, let's pick a letter, A through Z. M. My girlfriend's name's Michelle, so we'll pick M. Ooh. Joshua de Morgan stoned heeft goud in mond. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um the 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 morning uh rays the morn the has, sunrise no the morning rays really the rays in the morning has a golden mouth <laughs> <laughs> the yep. morning rays has gold in its mouth yeah, the morning race has gold in its mouth. What does it mean, Jim? Wow. Um, <laughs> rise and shine. <laughs> rise and shine. And um, the golden rays, are, the morning rays has gold in its mouth. Yeah, the morning rays has gold in its mouth. Um. I think BJ Palmer said this the best. Early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. And I think when you rise with that type of ambition in the morning, everything is golden. And um Wow. <laughs> wow, he nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it literally means that it it means like when you rise up early in the morning, that it, 
you have a mouthful of gold if you want to, something like that. Yeah, it's it's worth it's it's worth its weight in gold. You can say. Early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and yeah. advertise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Matthew, you, you, it's good. Uh, we have yeah. wise people on the show. Yeah. <laughs> what about Flot von Milt sign? Sorry, Flot von Milt sign. You I heard have of? no idea. <laughs> Leo is all tight. Vlot von Milt. I don't understand it. Vlot von Milt. Yeah. The next one. <laughs> uh, Niver als in mir. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's really simple. Busy like an ant. I don't have to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> the next log given. The? The next log given. Oh, oh. yeah, that's that's easy too. That's uh, giving him the the. Uh, Hello? No, no, the thing in the neck, the head in the neck. Oh, the the whiplash. Yeah, what well, what's it mean, Jim? Giving him a, a beat of the neck, the neck slack. They call it the neck punch. Huh. Um, in chiropractic, we call that the adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> um, the karate chop. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's the same. Giving him the karate chop. So, uh, what it means is uh, that when somebody is on the on the urge on, on on the ledge of falling down with his business, and you tell him to to uh, and he loaned you money, and you say, "And now I want my money back," then that's that's it for the guy. It is finished. You know, we call so, that put. We call that putting a hit on someone. <laughs> okay, the nail in the coffin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That nail yeah. in the coffin. Okay, that's, that's the uh, last nail in the coffin. That's so, the next slot. I, 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 I like I like the the nicer Dutch. <laughs> so it's always uh, good to have a little bit of, of culture humor just to show the world that you know everybody's. Everybody has these type of expressions. You know, I can say that these are stupid expressions, but I'm just saying that because there's a lot of stupid ones in the U.S. too. So that's going to be the end of the comic section, and now we're going to do the controversy section. Yeah, we call those figures of speech. Yeah. It's raining cats and dogs, break a leg. You got any more? Hmm. I don't, I, I'd have to like smack myself to, to, <laughs> yeah, knock, to, I know, right? to knock some cliches into my head. Yeah. Okay. So Jim, we're going to go to this next part, which is going to be discussing a controversial topic. We don't know what it's going to be. In the first episode that we had with Dr. Kevin uh, Jurina, we went through the whole list. I'm not going to go through this whole list. And here's the container, and we're just going to pick one. No cheating. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What oh, is no. it? Vaccinations. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we could go on for three days with this, no? Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> So we pick. We're actually, Jim. If you're no, old, I'm. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. I think that pe I think that I can give some real value to people when it comes okay. to uh, understanding this topic, and I can be very concise. We're also and, going into that topic next week in our second Council of Controversy uh, podcast episode. So you can start that up. You can start it off for us. I'll just be very basic. Um, you. You should. If you're into it. 
then do it. You shouldn't if you believe that it's not for you. Then you should have a choice. And I think that that's the most concise I can put it as mm. my body, my choice, my family, my choice, my home, my choice, my workplace, my choice, my travel, my choice. You're obviously on the decision making process for yourself. If you decide that it's your body, your choice, and you say, administer this to me, no problem. Um, but I think that we have to have um, exemptions based on my body, my choice. And I think that um, we have to also be very cognizant of making sure that there's no um, government or pharma overreach into uh, freedom of choice and free will. And I think that understanding these things are very fundamental for um, advancement of society. I think they're very fundamental for understanding that if you choose to live in fear of the boogeyman and sickness and disease, then that's your prerogative. But if you feel like uh, God designed our bodies to be healthy and that sickness comes and goes, then you're in the other camp. So I really think that it's, it's same as chiropractic. You have to live on an educational standard until people understand why they should or shouldn't. And when you think of something as heavy as vaccination, um, a lot of that is being indoctrinated to people through fear. And if you are afraid, then go all in. But if you believe in something else, then respect that boundary. And I think that that's where we have to come to for love thy neighbors ourself, is love them for their decision and not judge them, not shame them, not guilt them. And then we shouldn't feel the same way about ourselves. We shouldn't feel guilted or shamed or um, less than for making the decision to stand up for ourselves. So I think it's personal responsibility once again. Educate yourself. Um, make decisions based on your own research, your own network. And uh, yeah, I think that if, if people adhered to that, um, there'd be a lot more clarity for why to or why not yeah absolutely i love it i th thank you and the huge is the huge issue that i'm seeing with how this is going to go down if they are producing some some type of vaccination now they they basically by creating the idea of a vaccination for covid19 they've created so much goddamn fear around it that now you're going to have, I, I love everything that you're saying, but now when people get the vaccination, how are they going to treat people that choose not to? Because they're going to, that's what worries me a little bit is because it's going to divide the, the, the masses an incredibly huge amount. Only if we let it. Yeah. <laughs> like I live in Colorado. Um, I haven't worn a face mask once and I go outside every day. Like, I don't know. I, I think that it, at the end of the day, um, you're, you, you are most like the five people that you spend your most time with. So pick better quality people to spend time with and don't worry about the static and noise of how other people are treating each other. I think that's the thing we also have to do is look at what we're um, involved with. And if you want to be involved in everybody else's business, then that's your decision. But if you want to have a good nucleus of truth inside of you, then build a better network of people and pay attention to things that matter to you. And if, if somebody wants you to play by their rules, no, it's, it's my rules my body, my choice. And you guys can put mandates on each other. That's fine. I didn't sign up for that. Yeah. Like that's, that's the part is when government and pharma have too much overreach, they make people want to think that there's a division, but there's really not. It's a matter of choice and reference. You know, you chose to be a chiropractor. I chose to be a marketer. Can we still be friends? Of course. You mm -hmm. grew up in South Dakota. I grew up in Iowa. Can we be friends? Of course. You know, that's, you're push, that's pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, 
yeah, I get what you're saying. It's just, it's what I see from people like, um, when I talk to people that, that say that you're not vaccinating your daughter or you're not vaccinating your children or it's this type of thing that, yeah, it, it makes me sick. It's only, a, it's only a problem if you make it a problem. I'm, uh, I, I don't totally agree. Uh, I agree with you. you. Your words that you have spoken before, the, the best words I heard. Everybody can choose for themselves. That's the, the biggest thing. But here they're creating this fear thing that when you're in the supermarket and you don't apply the rules, then uh, people will start <laughs> mistreating you. And that's Crazy. it's not only getting to the supermarket, but now they're going to say on the news, yeah, we can open up the festivals again once everyone is vaccinated. So, and we can we can open up a border again once you're vaccinated. So the next step is they're going to try to make a vaccine passport. And yeah, then it's like, yeah, you're not you're not going to travel unless you're vaccinated. And this is going to be in Europe. And, my prediction is that it will be in Europe to start with, and they're going to try to get it globally, of course. Uh, but here, a lot of rumors, not only rumors, but the, the thing already started with the minister here saying, yeah, the festivals can get open again once you're vaccinated. And you can go in a store again once you're checked by the store clerk if you have any symptoms of coughing or this and that. So. They're really psychologically um, trying to create this um, division between people. And now you're seeing on the internet already, like uh, I'm, I'm a non-vaxxer. I don't, I don't want to be vaxxed. And the moment I say that, then I'm getting scolded at as stupid. Uh, and uh, they're putting me in my place because I'm the one who is uh, putting this contagion getting further and I'm the one who's killing their grandparents and, and this and that, you know? So it's, it's kind of tricky here. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Well, I totally understand that positioning too, but it only matters as long as people let it control them. If you guys said, Hey, we're going to go put festivals on whether you guys uh, approve of us being vaccinated or not, like, yeah, like it's going to have to come to a proposition that people say, um, like Rage Against the Machine would say, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Yeah, you just have to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you just have to rise up for yourself and um, the people rule the country. It's not politics that rule the people. And when people realize that it's the people that are the, the resource of freedom, it's not the politics that provide freedom. It's not the mandates that um, provide freedom. That's yeah. the control. So if people want to have festivals and they want to go to the, the supermarket and they don't want to be compliant, that's going to take a lot of people to be non-compliant for compliancy to not reign. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to find people that are eventually fed up with it and they're going to be like, no, like that's a bad idea. That's yeah, a bad solution. A and then there's an uprising. Yeah, I hope so, because here there's a fear train moving through this, this momentum of fear. It's, it's hey, that's what we're here for. triplicating itself. That's exactly why Dangerous. we're here talking. Yeah. I, yeah. Think pe I think people need to throw their fucking TVs away. And, for sure. uh, and they need to go to restaurants again. And they need to show up to park with each other. And I think they need to go back to, you know, a quality of life that is pre two months ago. Yeah. And we aren't even going to say, we aren't even going to say what they think that we want to say or what we're supposed to say. I think we should just go back and go get a haircut. You know, I, I wouldn't got a haircut last week. Mm. It's the best thing I did. Like when people think about like creating uh, freedom for themselves, I think, like I said, there, there's going to have to be people that draw the line in the sand and say, not on my watch. Um, yeah, there's going to be a fight.
Yeah. yeah. Sure. And, it, and you know, that's what happens is over time is control and people want to control. Um, yeah. Us, and, and everybody. The biggest Every problem resource. of control is um, being punished. If you don't lie, you will uh, being punished. That, that, uh, so Jim, I'll talk to you about this before next Friday. We have this controversy call over the vaccinations. We're going to have about six to eight people on the sh on the call. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to wrap this up with a bonus question that I asked. Sure. You. It's just I know we got a short time here, but um, I just want to pick your brain on anything that you can think of, anything that you've thought of in the past that you've never said out aloud on something, an invention, an idea that you think would benefit the world in a way that will make the world a better place for the future generations. So it doesn't have to be something that exists, but we want to know how people think on, on what they would do if they could create something that could change the world. Yeah. Um, I think if I could give one piece of advice, um, it would be a quote that I learned from someone um, when I was like 16 years old. And uh, my best advice to change the world was stop taking what people give you and start taking what you want. And that's different than an innovation. That's different than creating something that didn't exist before because that is telling you that I'm going to create my own destiny. I'm going to create my own future. And uh, I appreciate you for who you are, but I choose to do it this way. And I think that that's standing up for yourself. That's not being uh, submissive or compliant, but it's also a stance of strength. And when I started implementing, stop taking what people gave me and start taking what I wanted. That's when I stopped working a nine to five. That's when I stopped asking people for a paycheck. That's when I stopped uh, being considerate of if somebody liked me or not. And I think that that's really what it's going to take is personal individual's responsibility to uh, become great for yourself. And I think that that's what's really going to set the trend for how we uh, contribute to each other and how we build a future um, without fear. And I think uh, back to the early questions you guys asked me, it's self-responsibility. It's about owning your mind. It's about owning your behaviors. It's about owning your habits. And I think that the sooner that people realize that good healthy habits should always outweigh poor lifestyle choice habits, um, that's what's going to innovate people. Excellent. So then that Thank can go that. in our holistic school subjects that we can create for getting, you know, like Joshua's idea was to teach in a class, like about the different perspectives and points of view that exist within everybody. And what you're saying is tapping into that uh, self-esteem to stand in your your space and in your light and in your in your soul mission and giving the kids giving you know starting kids young with this to give them the encouragement that they are a unique individual that can benefit the world in a way that nobody can imagine but that person i mean an educated mind can't be pushed around and like they always say, Dr. Matt, you either stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yeah. And I think that most people just don't have the resources and the self-confidence inside of them to go for a hug rather than to go for the money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then we go need for, to have... go for the relationship and don't go for the capital gain. So now with Jim Chester 101 <laughs> in the educational system. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go for the relationship because those pay dividends. It's like the biblical sense. Will I give you a fish that feeds you a day or will I teach you to fish? That will feed you for a lifetime. Yep. And that's relationship brand marketing. Can I tell you how to grow a practice time after time? Or would you like me to go one time and get you new patients? I think that when we think about it, we want something that has um, lasting effect. 
and that's uh, building a good network around you and um, yeah, learning to fish day after day rather than eating one fish. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Spoken. Awesome. Awesome way to end the show. Well, so, great guys. Jim, your wisdom is, is an honor to have you on our show. Thank you, brother, for, for coming Thanks. to join our Hey man, I'm just a kid from just the kid from Iowa that loves his mom. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad you're from Iowa. That's enough. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> more than enough. So anyway, uh, we're gonna end the show, and how we end the show is just to say a little bit of something to everybody listening to us. Who's gonna say it first? Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed, everybody. See you next time. <laughs> Be easy on yourself. <laughs>